This is Martin Shervington, and welcome to the very first module of a course all about Google Semantic Search. Myself and David Amelant have teamed up, and based on his absolutely brilliant book, Google Semantic Search, we have put together a modular program exclusively for the Plus Your Business community and on plusyourbusiness.com. The aim of the course is to help you to see where search is going. So the future of search isn't going to be quite like it was. And as such, the approaches that you'll need to take, including using Google+, will start to become so much more important. And this course is very much the strategic thinking that you need to have when you're approaching Google Search. So let's begin, and I'm going to ask David a few questions. Uh, and the first one is, you know, what does semantic really mean? Okay, let's, uh, let's start with basics, really. Um, the word semantic comes from the ancient Greek word, which means meaning. But it doesn't mean a lot, really, uh, until we actually realize how it applies to us. And in, in the semantic web and semantic search in particular, um, this only has any kind of significance to us if we apply it to data, which is information. So essentially, this is where those two words we hear bandied about with semantic search come into play. Um, the uh, context and relevance, which we hear again and again, uh, basically define the importance of any kind of piece of information to us, which gives it semantic meaning in terms of what we're trying to do. And to sort of give a general example on this, imagine that you come across a very rare piece of information which hardly anybody in the world knows and you're the first person to conceivably find it, well, you file it at the back of your mind and it just hangs there. You can't really do very much with it because you came across it at a time when it just becomes nice to know but has no uh, any other kind of um, purpose or application to you, so it's useless. And this is the fate of a lot of data we come across unless it is relevant to what we're doing and is contextually practical or applicable to us. Uh, suppose for instance now you're trying to find the best way to fish for um, cod, conceivably, and you have no idea about fishing. That kind of information now is relevant to what you're doing and is, it is perfect within the context of what you're trying to do, which is catch cod. So that now acquires a lot of value. Any kind of data which acquires um, contextual relevant value to us is semant semantically important and that's what uh, semantic means at its most basic. It's a piece of information which is really valuable to us because it is relevant to the kind of question we're asking and the answer we're looking for. So if that's semantic then what does Google semantic search mean? Now that, that is very interesting because we talk about Google semantic search like we know what it is and it is very very different and um, a lot of people really haven't got the faintest idea how different and radically different it's going to be. Um, in, in the world of the past, the world we left behind, um, when we were looking at data, when we were looking at any kind of information, it was very much a fishing expedition we had to have the right hooks and the right bait and you had to be in the right vicinity hoping to catch and my analogy still holds here the right piece of information and what is happening with google semantic search that uncertainty largely is being erased so um, semantic search is trying to index the web of information in such a way that when we ask a question, it gives us the perfect answer in many ways. So it is perhaps good to think that we are transitioning from an imperfect world, informa informationally speaking, to a perfect one. And I'm using the word perfect in the full knowledge and awareness. That's a very utopian ideal. Uh, there is a very strong sense that we may, may never really get there because information is growing all the time, complexity in the data world is growing all the time, so it may well be that you know we will never get to the stage where things will be, that's it, we have nowhere else to go. 
um, but it's good to actually have a direction to go towards. Okay, so what are the different components of Google Semantic Search? Now, that's a, that's a really good good question because there are many different components to semantic search. I usually say that you know search is not rocket science, but here it is. Um, semantic search actually is pretty close to rocket science, um, but that's on the technical side at the implementation level because it is simply so complex and the uh, components that have to fit together are equally complicated in their own right. But when it comes to the interface where we access search and we access the information of the web, well, that's a lot easier to deal with because essentially we have um, three components. We have the web of data that exists out there somewhere in cyberspace. We have Google search, which is a search box, which becomes the interface through which everything happens. And we have in front of the screen, us. So really, it's just like three stages. We have behind the screen, we have the screen, and we have us. And those three come together in a very simple way. You know, you open up your laptop or you pick up your phone and you either ask your phone a question or you type a search query into the search box. The moment you do that, those three components really have to work. And here's how they work. The web of data, which is free floating data essentially, in any kind of shape or form, needs to be structured. And this is where Google's semantic index comes in where data begins to take a very structured format, which helps Google understand the individual pieces it has indexed, but also the importance of those pieces in relation to other pieces. So it begins to basically um, enrich its own knowledge of how those pieces fit together. Then it works on the search interface, because the search interface begins to understand more and more of the words we actually put there as words, which then allows it to understand the intent behind those words. And that becomes the interim step, step which we um, need to apply here for the interface to also understand us because we are a component. What we do, how we do it, when we do it, the signals we send, the searches we have, the people we associate with, these are all signals that semantic search tries to mine in order to understand us better. And the principle behind it is if search understands the information on the web really well and if it also understands us really well and then it understands what we ask really well and those three things come together seamlessly then it understands the question and can give an answer the way a person would so for instance if you ask me what's the weather like and that's all you ever gonna say it's not a lot for me to go with if I have never met you because I don't know who you are I don't know the intent behind your question. I don't know where you, geographically you may be. I don't know what your own <coughs> personal experiences may be. So that would be a tricky question to answer if I have never met you before. I don't know whether you're asking what the weather is like in your location because you assume that I am there with you geographically or what the weather is like at my location. Because I know you, because I know um, that we're geographically apart. When you ask me what the weather is like, and because culturally we have the same background in terms of in Britain we always talk about the weather and we're always envious about other people's weather except our own, uh, or in comparison to our own, uh, when you ask what the weather is like, I can actually de decide how to answer in terms that make sense to both of us. So that sort of explains a little bit of how the different components fit together and how um, Google semantic search is actually going to try and understand what we ask in order to give us um, an answer. So is it still important to be thinking about getting to that number one spot on Google? Well that is an excellent question because for way too long we were um, very focused on getting to the first page of Google and getting to the top spot of the first page of Google. And that created a leaderboard and a metric which um, today really no longer holds water. Um, there is no top spot, or rather there is a top spot on Google, but there's no first page of Google anymore. When the first page or the page of results we see becomes increasingly personalized because context and relevance, as we saw before with the question about the weather, is going to be different for everybody a little bit, then the um, particular first page of Google becomes different. 
And if it becomes different, then also um, there's no point in talking about it. But is there a point about talking about the top spot or the top slot in Google? Well, in a way it is because whatever the first page or whatever the page of results that you get in relation to a search query is, you still need to be there. You still need to be visible. And the more visible you are, the better it is. And ideally, you should be the only logical answer to the best uh, that would best answer the question what he puts in. So essentially, and here's a guideline for people thinking of, about how semantic search is going to affect their businesses, you need to have the kind of information which answers the questions that people, your prospects, are likely to ask, and then make sure that the information you have gives the best answer possible, which then makes your website, your business, the only answer possible to those questions. So that's the way it, it sort of links up. So the big question is why should businesses start to look at this now? And I suppose that's a, a really good question to have now because it follows up naturally from what we just covered about the top spot on Google and how different it is and what we should be doing differently. Um, businesses need to consider a different content creation strategy. In the past, we used to create content because we had to. Um, search used to look at the volume of words we had on our websites and look at keywords and keyword density and keyword accumulation. It used to look at how frequently websites were updated. It used to look at the exact length of articles. So we really had to write every day 400 words around certain keywords. And we all got caught up in this sort of content creation routine that created very thin value content, which didn't really help the end user very much but it certainly helped search engines because it brought them to our website and now this is no longer the case you really need to think about what is it that your business does how does it do it differently why are you in business even and who your target audience is and if you decide real answers to those questions then it becomes easier because you think okay if I have a fairly clear grasp of who I'm actually talking to and who I'm hoping to do business with, then I also have a fairly clear, clear grasp of what they're looking for. And if I think I know what they're looking for, then it becomes easier to create the kind of content that gives them the answers to those questions. So this is the process that businesses now need to get into. And it is a very different mindset to what they used to have in the past, which is quite a challenge really. But that, that's what it is. So. Um, it has to be done. The next question, David, is what are we going to cover on this course all about Google Semantic Search? Um, I'm hoping that throughout the next modules which we cover, which are you know 12 modules pretty much reflecting the chapters of my book on Google Semantic Search, we're going to cover comprehensively a lot of the things which have to do with semantic search, which people don't understand very well, um, which also includes what they need to do and how it affects them, perhaps where it is leading a little bit and the impact it's having and how radical it is. So it's going to be a very comprehensive course. And my real hope here is that by the time we finish, we will have created the kind of resource which will help, for lack of a better word, educate very much everyone who needs to know what semantic search is and, and to my mind semantic search is really important everyone needs to, to, to know about it um, not because they need to buy my book that would help of course <laughs> but really because anybody working on the web today is affected by it whether they know it or not and even more importantly anybody who is not working on the web today and they're working offline is also going to be affected by it and they certainly have no idea about this and eventually they will so i'm hoping i'm hoping we'll be able to touch on all these points throughout the course and basically um explore um why this is so and and how um we can sort of um, position ourselves to take advantage of some of the opportunities um, that are created. So thanks to David for this introduction to Google Semantic Search. I hope you enjoyed watching. 
And please click the annotations, which will take you to the rest of the program uh, on the plusyourbusiness.com site. See you at the next modules.